Hey, what's up? Delactual. Hey, what's up? Delactual. When is that how you del del actual? Del actual. Let me mute my sound here. Yeah, I, I I forgot to mute my sound. I'm the uh, on my uh, desktop. So, is there still an echo? There shouldn't be an echo now. There should not be an echo. All right. I just gotta post this up on a For the most part, I try to stay, I try to stay up. Yeah, so. that and pixel logic put out the signal all right that's that that's that all right let's get started here Crack open the ZBrush. Turn the rain. Turn the rain off. That's not it. All right. Uh, there, there is a there is a free version of ZBrush, um, called a uh, ZBrush Core or no, um, or ZBrush Mini, but it's it's extremely limited in in features, um, in functionality. But I mean, um. For the most part, it just, you pretty much get just like the, um, the basics of sculpting. So, you know, you can pretty much like, um, I don't think you can import or export anything, but, but you can, um, I don't even know if it has sub tool functionality, but yeah, I mean, you can pretty much get, get into like the, uh, rudimentary sculpting stuff with the free version. I forget what the free what what the free 
free version of ZBrush. Well, no, not for sculpting. Not, no, not, not sculpting. Blender has uh, about 10 years to go before it's, before it's um, as functional in, in fast as ZBrush when it comes to sculpting. You know, just because an app has a feature doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's as robust as, you know, I mean, they just, they just got sculpting the last three years. ZBrush has what, like 15 or 20 years developing sculpting. And it's just, it's just not the same. The performance isn't there in Blender when it comes to the sculpting. Um, and Blender's really not, not a good comparison to ZBrush. Blender's more like a, a more contextual contrast to Blender would be something like Maya. And Maya doesn't, you know what I mean? Maya isn't a dedicated sculpting app either. So it's like an apples to oranges kind of thing. You know, Maya has sculpting tools, but again, <clears throat> because you have the overhead of all the other tools in it and, and you don't have the focus development on those tools, it just, it just doesn't, you know, it just doesn't, there's really no comparison to Blender sculpting and ZBrush sculpting. So, but I, I, I do think Blender's a great alternative to Maya in, in 3D Studio Max. And it's rendering, you know, from, from what I've seen, it's it's got some really nice um, rendering options, both real-time and, um, <clears throat> you know, both real-time and the, hy the hybrid uh, rendering engines that are like kind of, you know, where the CPU, CPU offloads some things to the GPU. It's good for that. But overall, like, if you really want to get into, you know, character sculpting, like ZBrush is definitely you know, the, you know, the, the, the pinnacle of it. But, you know, great work can be done in Blender just the same. So, but it's just, it's just, you know, from getting from point A to point B is, is slow in Blender. Cause it's, it's just, it's just not, it's just not focused. And plus, uh, ZBrush does have they do have they do have subscription options and all that other stuff too so it's not it's not too inaccessible it's still for for the most part like when 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 you look at maya and or any of the autodesk applications they're still like to get you know they're still they're still expensive and i i don't know why i don't know why autodesk just doesn't bring maya down to you know, br bring the Maya subscription down to like, you know, drop the Maya LT and just bring it, bring Maya down to like $50. But again, you know, companies, you know, they, uh, companies have their whole pipelines built around Maya. Like they actually have in-house proprietary tools that they've invested in for, you know, years. So, you know, they, they you know, and they, they, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll pay, uh, fifth, they have no problem paying $1,500, you know, uh, annually for, uh, a seat of Maya. So, but yeah, you know, <clears throat> so that's that. Yeah, but Blender and Z, like a lot of people make this comparison to Blender and ZBrush, and 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 I, I I don't I don't understand the the focus, you know, it's just like so out of context, and the only people who do that are like people who don't really, I haven't spent a lot of time in ZBrush. They just know Blender, you know, Blender's free. I mean, <laughs> it's free, you know, but it, it it's still it's still. It's still in terms of sculpting and character art. It's yeah. It's 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 some years behind, you know, and they're 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 not gonna catch up, you know. So. And 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 which I also don't get because you know, ZBrush also 
you know, it's bit like for anyone who bought an original, um, who bought an original license, they haven't paid for it. They've been like the most friendliest company, you know what I mean? In terms of making it accessible, like, well, just show, show me the blender work. I mean, it, it's funny, but you know, show, show me like the proof You know, it's just it's it's just not it's just not there. Blender's not there in the sculpting. Like Blender Nation. The Blender Blender Nation is like the first uh they're like the, the first uh Software nationalist. It's so weird. It's so weird. And every every new every new version of Blender, like like there's all this hype. Oh, Blender's gonna take over the industry. It's the end of all commercial tools, and it never it never happens. It never happens. So, you know. But you know they're they're it's making its way you know it's making its way in into you know um, it's making its way in the studios. But again, it if anything, it'll be it'll be a replacement for Maya. It's not going to replace like ZBrush, Substance Painter. It's not going to replace your micro applications. You know it'll you know it'll it, it'll it'll find its way in as like a pipeline tool. But, you know, um, yeah, and there's just a lot of a lot of pragmatic reasons that, you know, it, it just doesn't, you know, not everyone just drops their the apps they've been using for 20 years or even five years and just switch over. It just doesn't work that way. It's like, you know, you use what works, you know, because it works, not because it's free. Like, that's not really. um that's not really a model like industry follows and you know so <laughs> that's that so what was I doing here let's see here kind of want to tighten up these vases a little or, or columns rail columns
shape of this. shape of this
cursor. the chat.
Let's see, what is my next thing here? Uh, so yeah, I was kind of thinking, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the, with this. I don't know, I might just ditch this and get a concept. But see, I really like this pose here because um, I did get like a an idea from this pose where I could kind of tell a better story, as, you know, as an illustration. So I might get on with that um, and, and do that instead of this because I, I don't know. I guess it's, it might not be the best idea to... <laughs> You know, it's, it's always helps to model from a concept, you know. Uh, yeah. Because it just kind of helps to focus things. But, I don't know, we'll keep rolling along here. We will keep rolling along here. Oops. figure out
that's what I need to do. So let me go ahead and slide these up. Slide these down. holes in here. I think that's going to work out all right. They just make these their own poly group. Shit. Let's see, hotkeys load. Hmm. 
what just happened to me last night. Let's go ahead and delete Palagay Ball. Oops. to restart here because my my hotkeys aren't working some support loops.
good on that for now. We'll go ahead and turn on the double faces. Get an interior. are actually let me get the the corner one
I guess that's fine. That's fine for now. I'm going to take a little break here and use the restroom. I will be right back.
back. We are back in business. All right. Just my mic here. So what are we going to do next? I actually had a friend of mine who was working on some clothes and ZBrush. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to address uh, some of the things. Um, Address the dynamics just to show, just to kind of show how they can be used. Um, you know, to kind of push things. Um, and I, and I, I've actually got a uh, an IMM brush, uh, base mesh that could kind of facilitate what he was working on. So. I'm going to step into that for a second and show that. That might be useful since I'm kind of kind of uh, in some murky waters about where, you know, where I want to take this right now. So at least that can be useful to somebody. So, all right. Let me grab that IMM. find it there it is so this is just a little IMM brush I got some arms and different things I actually haven't used a lot of a lot of this stuff in a while but I made them a long time ago but I just recently added some base meshes for a jacket and we got a dress in there and we got a trench coat so I'm gonna work with like this hooded flight jacket so let me make sure. Oops. Let's go ahead and clear that. Wait, was there something in there? Hmm. Nope, I think we're good. Oh, there they are. Okay. So we want to make sure this is centered. I'm going to go ahead and draw it out. on there Let me turn her hair off right In this jacket, I was, um, why is that pink? Oh, okay. In this jacket, I, pre I pretty, um, I pretty much modeled it in ZBrush. It lost some of the poly groups it had, but let me go ahead and get rid of that. 
dress or bathing suit or whatever that's supposed to be. I'm not sure yet. But anyway, I had modeled this in ZBrush uh, starting with the extract, starting with extraction. You know, I just extracted the base geometry off the off the body and um, I actually I actually used you know it was uh, the low res here was done with uh, Z remesher using poly groups you know I, I think that's for, for a lot of things like you know um, for things like clothing and armor uh, you know it's always a pointed debate if you should manually retop that stuff and I say no because if you if you learn to use like if you learn to leverage poly groups and you start utilizing them they're a huge lifesaver uh, in ZBrush not a lifesaver but it just it just it, you know a lot of other things are kind of dependent on poly groups and if and if uh, and if and, and I, I notice a lot of ZBrush artists don't really use them that much or, or like you know I don't know they just it, but it's just an it's a very effective way to like manage your models and to manage the various parts of your models so um, let me increase this but you know it, it's definitely it's definitely worth getting time to know um, if if you're if you know if you work in ZBrush a lot and even even um, like I said, when even when it comes to just managing managing your models overall, uh, you know, when you're exporting them to other apps, you know, it it, it, it makes it a lot easier. Like in terms of uh, baking ID maps and that sort of thing. Um, uh, material IDs and stuff. Um, you know, you can you can you can apply the polygroup colors to a mesh uh, f for that kind of thing. There's there's just there's just a lot of there's a lot of functionality to polygroups, and 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 one of the one of the cool functionalities is definitely uh, polygroups with uh, Z remesher is probably the most effective means of 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 uh, getting topology done on objects inside ZBrush. So, you know, um, it, 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 it kind of helps, con it kind of, uh, not kind of, but it, but it, it does a lot to control the edge loop and edge flow, you know, where polygroups are assigned. Like it's, it's always going to give you, if you have a polygroup, you're always going to get like around a seam or something on a coat. You're always going to get like, you're always going to get good edge flow in that area, you know, where that part breaks off. And those edges come come in handy, uh, you know, to model certain things in, you know, like a seam on a jacket. You know, you can just go ahead and bevel it and, you know, um, extrude out a seam or extrude out the geometry for for a seam or just you know what work you know work with to help you work with those area areas uh, really efficiently so you can use things like scale you know if this had shoulder pads or to just get that nice that nice overlap you see on a um, uh, seam in a jacket you know so you can get get a nice volume and also, if you need if you need more resolution on things, you know, you it, it makes it easy to break off the parts and then keep them organized. You know, it also helps with UVs, uh, UV by poly groups. You know, you'll get you'll get nice islands on your respective parts. Now, if I just go ahead and unwrap this real quick, and. You know, of course, you don't want all these little strips and everything, but that's when you can go ahead and merge polygroups to um, to get that stuff done. You know, 
or at least you know at least get your initial layout done really quickly and then you can take it into Maya or Blender or Moto or something and in and, and, uh, and weld your you know weld edges and kind of consolidate the islands so that that's kind of like one thing and if I go ahead and let me just do an example oops here and just say I sculpted on this a bunch you know uh, blah 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 you know we go ahead and sculpt on this and do to do to do, do, do you know and say I had to dynamesh this for some reason for whatever reason So just say that then I lost my subdivision levels or, you know, I added some uh, parts in, in whatnot. Um, if I go ahead and run Z remesher with keep groups and you can go fairly low. Like right now this is at, you know, we'll set it to like 15, 1600 and we'll go ahead and now with symmetry, I have symmetry on, so I'm gonna anything that's not symmetrical, you're gonna lose. But I'm just showing this as a uh, example here. Wait, let me go ahead and turn symmetry off. And and like these little groups, of course you'd wanna you'd wanna add those, but you can see it does it usually does a pretty good job it doesn't want to do a good job right now well that's because I have these you know for Z remesher you you, you do want to you do want to um, like if you have like too many groups it'll throw it off so you can consolidate them Like of course we don't we don't want like this little crap here. That's gonna be a pain. just helps to think about your you know like to arrange polygroups um, you know to anticipate edge flow as well Just say you can use a slice curve brush to assign polygroups. I use this a lot. Let's see, just say we wanted to add a polygroup for that. Right, let me go ahead and 
sometimes it works like to do one uh, to do one at a fairly high uh, higher resolution if you got a lot of poly groups and then and see I mean that pretty much retained it we have our, like our edge loops where we need them you know uh, this is a little messy in here but I mean you can work with it you know uh, then you can go ahead and drop them down to say like 15 and uh, let's turn symmetry off and you can go ahead and knock it down I mean and that's pretty good as a construction mesh you know this isn't that great but again if I made that one poly group it would do a better job of holding that in place But you know what I like about it is 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 one of the um, even if whether you use this for your final like uh, bake topology, what I like about it is um, say you want to pocket on the arm or something, you can go ahead and create the geometry for it. You know, and in my opinion, for certain things. It's all. It's always. It's always a good idea to try to, you know, block out actual geometry for for the thing. You know whether you're gonna sculpt. You know sculpt most of the detail or not. You know it just it just helps. You know that way you can you know you you ensure like good re readability on all your uh, various components. So I can go ahead and, you know, say that was a pocket, you know, and then, you know, if I have seams around the pocket, it's just control E. If you uh, hide the poly group and hit control E, it'll create a, um, it'll create an edge loop around that poly, around that uh, poly grouped polygon. And then you have like this whole little pocket thing you know now you have like some nice volume to work with and it's the same thing for any other kind of pockets you know if you had like a pocket here you know you could go ahead and extract the geometry you know and actually get that little flap on there or what or whatever the case may be you know and you know that this topology is definitely good enough to 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 model on and sculpt. So as I was say, I had a little. I wanted to put a scene here. Oops. Yeah, that didn't come out so well, but let's see here. We can do the same thing, control E, and it'll give you the polygroup. You know. You can go ahead and extrude the geometry out. You know, to get a nice readable seam and what have you. Or if you wanted to add the little pocket, the little uh, pocket flap, say like on a jacket, you know, go ahead. that out and take something like the move brush 
mass by poly group and you can kind of pull out that the flap for the pocket or whatever you got going on and then you got like these edge loops to model out seams Oops, we want that. Change it to additive. Just that sort of thing. All right. I'm going to go ahead and undo all this and kind of demo a little bit of the physics. So. as a just as a uh, kind of a rough block in on some wrinkles and yeah and you can go hit I mean um, you know you can work work with the uh, you know you can work with subdivision level with the dynamics and everything so you can kind of go ahead and and, and sculpt details uh, you know ahead of time or anticipate them you know but here you can see I've got uh, mass by poly groups on with the standard brush and I'm able to just go around where this seam is on the jacket and just kind of sculpt it in you know and so you know it just retains good readability and all that so let's just Let's lower the subdivision level on this and get the arms into place here. And that's the other thing for posing. You know, you can mask. You can go ahead and mask. You know, now, one thing I wish uh, they would add to ZBrush is I wish they would, um, when you use Transpose Master, if it retained the poly groups, that would be so awesome. That would be so awesome if it kept your poly groups. You know, because I mean you if you have good if you have good edge flow, you can go ahead and reassign them in Transpose Master. But overall, it would just be better if if uh, maybe there maybe someone wrote a script for it or something, but if if uh, if Transpose Master um, retain poly groups that would be super duper let me see here I got these interior you know I'm gonna go ahead and delete the interior on this I don't really need it it's just gonna get in the way yeah yeah you know who cares I'm just gonna make sure I got my Interior. I just kind of want to move this into place on the sleeves. We got it all. I think we got it all. All right. So. I don't know why. There it goes. That's what I wanted.
Oops, we got something going on out here. We got something unmasked. Let's go ahead and mask that. You don't have to be too precious with the posing because you're going to use the dynamics to to uh, settle it in there to fit it. So you can just kind of move it. And normally this would be an A or T pose or something, but oh, we got this fucking crap. Let me see here. It's really, you know what? I could just delete these off the. Go ahead and delete those. Delete hidden. There we go. And okay. Something about this auto groups. Good. And we got that. And we can go ahead and get rid of that. Yeah, that should be most of our <coughs> problematic interior pieces. And you know what, that's not going to be that big of a deal. I ain't going to delete that. I always mask when I delete because it, it keeps the, uh, you know, because sometimes if you've got subdivision levels on it and you delete, um, it'll kind of, it'll, it'll kind of soften everything you sculpted. So I, I found out if you go ahead and mask it, you'll retain that stuff. Let me see. Don't know where that's going there delete hidden and we got this piece right here we just need to And this might get a little wonky with some of these interior pieces. I mean, it the dynamics work with it. You know what? I'm going to undo all that and just move that one piece back in. And just delete the sleeves. Fuck it. Because this is, this is taking up too much time to the point. I just don't know how the dynamics are going to behave with the uh in because sometimes you get you get kind of weird results with let me see here auto groups because there's this face in here there we go So this is our jacket, 
And a lot of times I like to turn off um, the clothing. So the next thing, and if you have hair or anything, you do want to turn, like you want to have that off when you run the collision. Not the collision, but the, um, yeah, when you create the collision volume. So that's the first thing you want to create the collision volume. And you can see we still have, we still have our subdivision levels on here. I don't know what the hell. Hmm, that's weird. But anyway, you can go ahead and all that. get probably get a um, better result at one subdivision left so you want to go ahead and recalculate it and by default this gravity strength is really strong so when you run it you know you're just gonna get that it's not quite what you want um, so I, 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 I turn that down and kind of, you know, it's almost like simulations, you know, they're really like to assist like sculpting, you know, they're not, they're not a direct competitor to Marvelous Designer, you know, Marvelous Designer is definitely the king when it comes to cloth fabrication and, and simulation and all that. I mean, even though it does have some, some things with its design that, that I don't really appreciate, you know, that just kind of. That just kind of um, are annoying, like like uh, you know, I don't like how the simulation just runs, and I guess you can mask and and all this other kind of stuff, but you know, um, and 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 you can just like, you know, you can freeze parts, you know, uh, you can you can freeze parts and stuff. I'm just, it's just like the workflow of it is 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 like is like annoying for me, like to be in. To be in that pattern, um, you know, in, in, in the pattern window, like to work in 2D on 3D objects is just, it's just, it just um, irks me, you know, the idea of it. And like, it, I just, I'd like to see Marvelous Designer go, like take some uh, cues from ZBrush and start putting functionality into like the brushes, like into like a, some kind of brush system, you know. But anyway, I don't want to go on too much of a rant about that. Anyway, so by default, like you want to turn your gravity way down, right? That's probably a little too down. Wait a minute here. I think we got, we got to delete that. We got to delete another thing. <clears throat> Anyway, so now we can go ahead and let's recalculate this. And that's looking like shit. Okay. You know what? Let's go ahead and delete higher. And you see now, now that I'm demoing this, it wants to like act up. That's, that's perfect. Let's go ahead and delete all these subdivision levels. There we go. I guess I had a problem with the subdivision levels. So, um, liquify, just, uh, this liquify option kind of does just that. It kind of, you know, makes things kind of wavy and 
swoony, you know, this far. up a little and you recalculate it and so there you go you're getting a nice fall on the on the body there and that's looking pretty good all right See when you hit when you do contract and again by default contraction is really is really um, strong, but if you tone it down quite a bit, you know that's probably a little too much. But just say you wanted to, you know, there we go. That's probably pretty good. And expand does just that, kind of expands. You know, you'll get more, a little more bunching and stuff with expansion on. Right. Oops. There we go. We raise the subdivision level. We'll get a little, a little more out of it. So that's pretty good for now. And the next uh, thing is some of these brushes like cloth move if you want to if you want to get some like bunching at the sleeves let me see is it cloth pull or move let me see what move does by default yeah so and again if you have poly groups you can go ahead and you know the mask off areas pretty easily and just use your cloth move you know and that's same thing around the edges you know where you got like seams and stuff just kind of pull that out and again based based on your 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 collision uh, setting you know it's still gonna you know it's still gonna obey all the meshes underneath it you know I want to get the hood here And like I was saying earlier, like like overall, like they're here to like like you know they're mostly to like assist in your sculpting, you know to kind of to kind of get things, you know to, to kind of get like the suggestive key elements to how your cloth fits, you know. In 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 in, in a lot of regards, you know. Um, that's kind of that's kind of the deal with marvelous too you know because uh you know the cleanup i mean you've got to do a lot of cleanup to really 
get those results out of there, you know? So, then if we go ahead and let me see, oh, we got mass on. So, and you go ahead and subdivide it, and things are looking pretty, pretty cool. Go ahead and recalculate it. Kind of turn this expand off. And you can kind of relax it. That's probably. Uh, stop, 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 stop. Uh, let's go ahead and drop it one level here. just kind of nudges things but yeah if you if you get in there and and you mess with the settings you can get some pretty 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 good results and a lot of times if you go ahead and if you kind of block out you know it it it'll respect like like if you put um seams and stuff like if you place seams or sculpt in any seams for the most part it, it'll retain you know it, it'll retain uh, the detail at the higher subdivision levels without mangling them too much but but I'm still I'm still learning them you know for the most part but it's just it's just a matter of getting in there and, and tweaking with these default settings which are like super powered right from the jump you know and the, another thing to be aware of is that the um there like a lot of things in zbrush are scale uh are relevant to scale so if you're getting like really weird results results from something no matter what um no matter like what settings you're using like like um a lot of times that's like a scale issue it's just like because Z, ZBrush kind of has its own, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have scale per se, but it, but, but its tools are like kind of developed around, like if you look at Dyna, you know, Dynamesh as an example, like, um, I can't remember if something's like way big, you know, you can crank your Dynamesh all the way up to like, uh, 40, 96 or whatever the highest, uh, level it goes and you'll still get like you know, you'll still, it'll, it'll dynamesh to like, uh, a thousand polys or something like that. But the way to fix that when you're running into that, um, you know, if you're not in a production environment and you, you know, you're not exporting to a game engine and all that, uh, if you're just doing a sculpt, you know, in high res work, like it doesn't have to go anywhere. Um, you, you know, uh, you can use Scale Master, and if you do ZBrush Scale Unify, if you just run that um, and just set it to centimeters or whatever, but if you run the Scale Unify, that that's actually unifying the scale to all the functionality in ZBrush, and so that would repair like any crazy issues you're having uh, with Dynamesh working weird or even like a, you know. Um, the the dynamics it's a, it's the same thing you know if if your mesh was like way huge like if you export it to Maya and the thing's like you know a thousand feet tall and it's just like supposed to be a six foot character then like the the gravity strength would be like um, the gravity strength would be like even at the highest setting it it, it just wouldn't it wouldn't work right it, it's gonna like uh, it would you know, it wouldn't be as powerful. It would kind of dampen the, you know. Whoa. Oops. But yeah, it would kind of dampen the um, the strength. 
quite a bit. So yeah, scale's important and in, in, in any more, you know, I always like, I always, you know, all my characters are like six uh, feet tall, you know, scaled out to seven uh, centimeters. So what's that like a hundred and, I don't know, what, what, what's, what's six feet to centimeters? I think it's 176 centimeters. But I just got in the habit of just making sure everything's like scaled right, like from the beginning. Um, because it, it always causes a lot of problems later down the road road. But if you're, again, if you're staying in ZBrush and you're getting like weird stuff, like the scale master utility, I mean, you don't, you can resize and all that, but I, I haven't quite gotten my head around that and I've gotten myself into some trouble with that. And I just ended up, um, you know, uh, exporting everything in, in, scaling it in like my exporting all the low resolutions and scaling it in Maya or something, you know, at, at six feet, you know, using the, um, using the, uh, the measure tool and then re importing it and then, and then unifying the scale, but unify zebra scale unify will, uh, <clears throat> will unify, um, <clears throat> will will unify everything to, to ZBrush's like world like in, in tools and another issue you'll see is like with brushes you know like like where the max size is like you know too small that's another scale issue and that and that that's only that that's with dynamic the dynamic brush settings but it's it's like the same idea so if you're if you're cranking it all the way up and in, in in you know you're still not getting you know a good a good brush size like like at max it only gets like this big that that's a scale thing even if you go and even if you go mess with the um the uh the brush like you can't even fix it with doing like max brush size and brush scale and all that it'll still be off so yeah just want to make a note of that if you're getting like really weird results with with uh with certain tools in ZBrush, no matter like what settings you're you're using, it, it's definitely it's definitely gonna be in the realm of scale and whatnot. So, and using the ZBrush Scale Unify will will fix that. It won't fix uh you know it won't fix like. You know, if you export to Marmoset and the thing's like a thousand feet tall, you know, um, it won't fix that, but it will fix it inside ZBrush. But yeah, it's always good to just like kind of, kind of get a habit of, um, get, get a habit of your scale and, and, you know, um, and, and have like a, a scene that you always use where you know the scale's right and, and stuff like that. And that, that's kind of like what I do. Like to just not have to think about that anymore, you know, and I always work in centimeters, you know, that that changes with print. I think I'm not sure all the specifics of print like, but yeah, just a little, little rant <laughs> and rant, but those are, they're, they're just things I see. I've seen, you know, I've seen artists get into trouble with over the years and they're just like, oh, this, this is not working and. Blah, blah, you know, and I did everything and, you know, yeah, it's really frustrating. It's really frustrating. But, so where am I at? So I guess, um, I can move on with this character a little bit here. Um, do, do, do.
Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do too much more. I think I'm good. Good on the stream. That's a great name, man. <laughs> does have like this dress thing um, so maybe I'll try doing that What I can do here is delete the crotch, kind of work this into Yeah, man. I, I yeah, you gotta you gotta you gotta spend more than an hour with ZBrush, like uh, or any application really. Um, but yeah, you should all you should always use where you're what you're the most productive in for sure. So.
in the extrude move and that'll just that allows you to just like extrude an edge out and it you know it'll it'll snap it'll just go ahead and snap for you so I'm actually um, turning this into more of the dress because it's actually a dress in the reference yeah I mean it doesn't have a limited screen size you can make the canvas as big as you want like the canvas is completely dynamic and so is the UI so like right now I have my canvas set to 240 uh, and, and those things about the UI and stuff is um, yeah if you uh, yeah it's just the canvas setting you know you just set the document and you can set it to whatever size you want um, but you know you want to say stay relative to the display you're using um, but unless you were like rendering a poster you know you could set it to like 5,000 by like 5,000 you know if you were rendering like a poster or something and as far as the UI, the UI is completely, truly customizable. Like you can, you can wipe the UI clean and build out and completely build out the UI uh, yourself. You did what? You created a custom UI. Yeah, but you got you would have to know like the tools really well to know. You did what? Change the document. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, the, the yeah, it, that could that's probably an issue with your with your hardware. Like you know, because um, ZBrush is completely CPU dependent. It's not. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what to tell you. You really have to. You'd have to spend. You'd have to spend a lot of time you know, maybe about a month, you know, to a couple weeks to get, to get your handle on any application. It's like, you know, I've, I've never had a problem with the UI. So, I mean, I don't really have a problem with any UI in, in any application because it's just a matter of knowing where buttons are Yeah, well, the canvas size, if you're having trouble, like, if you can't scale your canvas, then, then you know, and it's, like, crashing or something, like, that would be the only thing that would, that would cause you to have, like, a limited canvas size would just be your hardware. The, the, there's, in terms of, in terms of functionality, it's there, it's just, um, you know, your hardware would, would have an impact on canvas size and all that But yeah, UI, um, UI and application, that's always like, people like Haiti, like you just learn where buttons are and what they do, um, you know, in, in that's, that's with any application. There's really, there's really nothing, there's really nothing different than any, than in any application, like as far as UIs go. Now, if I had to pick something with the worst UI, well, it was Blender up until, I guess, about two or three years ago. Um, and as far as navigation, like, if you're using a mouse in ZBrush, like, it, it doesn't feel right. It's really designed for a tablet or, or a uh, some type of tablet device. And really, most of the time, the only things you're ever really using is all in control. Like, so control, and you drag the pen, and you zoom. Um, 
right click on the pen rotates an object all is panning like it's like all is panning there's really there's nothing there's nothing like you know it's there's not a whole lot of it's not real complicated like you don't have to do a lot of finger yoga you know to 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 navigate and that's all the ui is in zebra so just navigation so and the rest you know you're selecting stuff so if you think about it like a canvas you know uh you think about it like um the old school like drawing drafting boards where you know you have all your pens and rulers and stuff around you and you know you're going into you know you're selecting a tool that's kind of like the um yeah yeah you probably didn't spend enough time with it like i couldn't go into any well well actually Z, zbrush when i started using zbrush it, i took to it right away because i came from uh like a traditional background i used to draw and paint a lot so like for me to adapt to zbrush i, I adapt to it pretty quickly um but again like you know i you you know on any given project i could bounce between like four and five apps and they're all generally generally the same you know in terms of navigation it's like some you know variation of all in control and middle clicking and selecting tools from a palette so you know it's just it, you, you just got to give give things time you know but and i think and i think one of the things that you know uh, there's a lot of you can get into if you don't customize the ui you can get into a lot of uh, a lot of digging into palettes and stuff, like the subtool palette, like you know, like this thing. Ugh. Whatever you want to drag and move, like this thing, like you know going through all this like to find a tool that you need and then you don't know if you need the tool but again like like there's so much of it in here you know and no no one artist really uses everything in um zbrush so you know depending on what type of artist they are like you know uh, like an environment artist uh they'll probably use zbrush in more of They'll probably use ZBrush more like in a you 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 more for its utility, you know, to facilitate certain things, you know, but in you know and not really use it for, um, you know, the scope of their production. You know, even though environment artists do use it, like per se to like create a prop, you know what I mean, like to create part you know props and stuff but overall like you know I, I would say something like blender or my or anything like that is going to be better suited for for full-on like uh environment production art so it's just but if you want to make characters like yeah i mean that that's you know characters or you want to do any kind of illustration like 3d illustration and stuff like that or concepting like like you're just like not, not nothing's gonna nothing is gonna touch zbrush in that department but yeah like you know you see all these menus and until you know what you need when you need it like you know um you know that's why i take a lot of these buttons that i use a lot and i just you know and i and i customize the ui and so i don't have to be digging through these trays so all right
Yeah, I don't I don't mind the subscription for Maya, but I I hate the um it's just too expensive. Like like I if they I, I don't you know, and I they work out their business however they work it out, but but um it's still not accessible, you know. Um well, it's accessible. Okay, it's accessible because it's easy to get. It's easy to get your student license with Maya. Um, you know, if you're going to school or taking any kind of class, you know, and it has an email address or something like that, you know, you can get a, a student license and you can have it for like three years. So, you know, yeah, yeah, Maya did used to have perpetual license. Yeah. Way, way back in the day. I, I think they went subscription in like, I think it was like 2013 or 2014. But yeah, but the thing is, see, their maintenance cost, they had all these maintenance costs and everything else. Like, like, uh, you know, even when they were perpetual, like, and if you didn't, if you didn't have, if you didn't, um, if you didn't get the maintenance cost, like Maya was like five thousand dollars for a perpetual license, and if you didn't get the maintenance, uh, let's see here, edge loop. What do we want to do? Edge poly loop. Let's see if that's what I need. No. If you didn't get the maintenance package on top of it, like you didn't get like service packs, you know. So, I mean, I, you know, the, the subscriptions are probably overall, they're probably actually, you know, a little cheaper for say companies, you know, when you, when you, when you added in all the, uh, all the other costs, let's see, edge loop, poly loop, edge loop, which one? Okay. That's what I want. Edge loop kind of pull that skirt out and in the in zbrush still has their perpetual license you know i mean and it's still like compared to other to, compared to other software it's still like one of the most affordable applications out there i mean i, I bought my license back in 2010 and you know i haven't paid for an update yet so, I've been using ZBrush, yeah, about, about 11 years. Oh, shit. Why, why are you not working? Insert, there we go. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're, I mean, yeah, I mean, subscriptions really, if it like, like, you know, it kind of sucks not to have a perpetual license, but I, I kind of like subscriptions better because, because overall, like, you know, um, it's still cheaper, like, and you can make it cheaper. Like if you don't need the software at it. You know, if you only need the software for six months and it costs you thirty dollars a month, you know, whatever thirty times six is what two hundred and forty dollars. You know what I mean? And you pay two hundred and forty dollars for six months. You know, and granted, that's like that's like you're you're working in some kind of production scenario where where you know you're you're either making money as a contract artist or you're your your business itself. But you know where where whereas if you you only had the option to buy a perpetual license like and you needed a tool for something then you're you know you're spending two or three thousand dollars and you're only using it for six months so I mean th there there's advantages and disadvantages to it like in yeah so I mean it just all depends you know and in. And I think Photoshop's pretty reasonable, like still. I don't know what I don't 
I'm locked into like uh like Adobe stuff. I'm locked in like to a twenty dollar subscription. And you know, I've been using that for years. That's like twenty dollars is like five cups of coffee. You know what I mean? And a, a whole uh, Adobe suite. I don't, I don't even remember what they cost. I remember I think I for my first one I think I paid a, it was like about two thousand dollars or something. And then it was like six months later. You know the new the new version came out and it was like six hundred dollars to upgrade. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, that's a, that. That's why I think Blender is a good a good option, like to replace Maya, because really, if you have Blender, if you have Blender, like all you'll need is like all you really need is maybe like Marvelous Designer. You know, it depends on what you're doing. Like it all depends on what you're doing, but you know, um, you know, really, you could get like you know, sub a Substance Suite and uh an adobe suite and a um you know in zbrush or something like that or you know it's not it's not so bad you know yeah well game i mean game production i mean you could pretty much do that between blender and a game engine like like uh like you know if you're using unreal unreal's completely free so if you're, um, I mean, it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing characters and rigging and animation and all that, I mean, you know, and, and not all game characters, you know, game art doesn't always have to be like, like, especially indie games, you don't have to follow like any, any, you know, rigid production, uh, guidelines, you know, you can like make your own tools and shit, you know? You know, if you're doing stylized characters, like, yeah, I mean, there's a lot you could do, uh, do with just Blender in a game engine. Um, but, like, characters, if you really want to get deep into character art and that's, like, all you want to do, then, like, um, you know, uh, Z ZBrush is, is, is probably, you know, the strongest tool in that in that focus yeah yeah I think yeah I don't remember I don't remember what unity does anymore or unreal but yeah they take they take a cut you know um yeah They take a cut. I don't know what... I, I know they, they both take a cut. Like, both Unreal and Unity. I don't know what it is anymore. I th think it's... It's 5% on Unreal, right? Or is it more? Extrude. What the fuck am I doing? Um, extrude. Ah. What am I doing? Oh, extrude move. That's what I'm doing. And not that one. Edge loop. There we go. Do one more edge loop on this. Let me just see what happens here. I don't want to bridge this up. Oops. Oops. Move, 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 move. Well, yeah, well, I mean, I mean, <clears throat> Unreal, yeah, but I mean, yeah, Unreal is pretty, <clears throat> I mean, Unreal is like, you know, that's, that's fully developed, you know, game development ah. tools that like, you know, um, 
Why don't you want to stitch? <clears throat> in Unity, I don't. You know, I don't know what the deal. I guess a lot of mobile games are, are made in Unity, and and they've got some really in, impressive tech demos, like every couple years. You know what they're doing on the rendering side. <clears throat> I mean, I think eventually Unreal will even like replace a lot of like uh, rendering, you know, um, a lot of rendering that CG artists do, especially with especially with the uh, ray tracing functionality, you know. All right, let me run some dynamics, see what happens. I don't think this is going to go too well. What's this? I should probably pull that up a bit. Unity lighting is not as good as it was. Yeah, I, I think like we, I think the deal with Unity is like to get it to do what they do in the demos. Like you have to actually develop a lot of tools. You know what I mean? Like Unity, like it, you know, it's more open box. You know, it's almost like an, a a real time operating system where like you, you know, to get it to do things like it doesn't do everything out of the box, but you can you know, you can make it do just about anything, you know, if you, if, if you, if you have a team of developers, you know what I mean? So that's kind of like the, the trade-off with, with unity. It's more accessible off, you know, off the gate, but then if you really want to get in, you know, if you really want to get into something deeply, like you pretty much either have to wait for somebody to write, uh, you know, uh, create a pug a plugin or whatever you know to to get that functionality like you know someone has to like it yeah it's all developer driven that 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 that's where the you know that's when they um you know once they did once they went in the direction of the unity asset store that's like you know what it's all about is like that whole you know community is like its own ecosystem almost you know, his own e ecosystem of, of development. But yeah, when I, you know, I started in games like, well, all, I think just about most of the games I shipped were done in Unity. Well, all, you know, all of them. I work, I mostly work in uh, indie games. All right. Collision. Let's do a collision. Yeah, it is, it is good because you can get you can get like anything Unity don't do. Someone made you know an asset for it that you can do that thing. Where where I think with well Unreal is the same place. They have the same idea, but but the the, the core of their development is run by uh, Epic. You know they 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 you know you know it's 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 pretty it's highly functional out of out of the box but yeah the add-ons the add-ons are are the thing about unity and and if you know and if you have if you have a, a good team of developers you know you can make unity do anything you know all right
double, double, double. I guess that's fine for now. Lurk Lee rank game. I don't know. What is that? Bubble putter nuts. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I have got to use the bathroom. I will be back in a few minutes. Thanks for hanging out with me, uh, Bubbles Butternuts. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see here. Look at my amazing splash screen. It's got rain.
There we go. I'm back. I forgot to unmute my mic. <laughs> so do you do do you are are you focused on like um, when you say game development, are you into art or just like the whole scope of game development? Oops. Not what I wanted to do. There we go. See what's going on on my YouTube page. Still going on. Right. Oh, there was a network error. What is going on here? Should have a network error. Oh, okay, we're still on. on. Do, 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 do. So that's that. I guess I could put a light bulb in here. I guess I could have just. 
just duplicated this. Don't need the knee bones. Alright, so we kind of got a little something going there. Oops. folds over like this. too I do want to get you know I do want to I, I guess create a couple front fronts I don't want to model the whole like building but I do want to actually have something like this in there in the background and decisions 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 see I was thinking if I do if I do this pose, um, you know, I could do this whole thing like, a, you know, 
drop the idea of the wings and just have her like uh, I was thinking of having her in a similar pose and and like smoking a cigarette and like the cigarette would be coming out of here you know should be holding it in this hand or something um, and like maybe put like a wine glass on here and so the story would be like you know she's at a party somewhere and she stepped out <laughs> she stepped out on the balcony to have a cigarette in the winter because it's all hot where you know in the party or whatever and she just came outside for some fresh air and have a cigarette you know and see the snow fall you know that kind of thing so i would that's what that's what i was kind of thinking and then you know the ravens i do want to do the ravens flopping around so i don't know we'll see we will see still need a lot of work the legs yeah, sculpt on that for a few minutes and I'm probably gonna shut things down here soon oops I need to start using folders. I haven't gotten way into folders yet. But it's on the list. I think it'll definitely be helpful with something like this. I think once I get once I kind of get the anatomy where it needs to be, I'll probably I'll probably go into the final pose.
is interior of the knee is going to be.
the fuck is that brush? I don't think it was SK slash. Yeah, that's that's okay. I'm just kind of tighten this up through here. Oops. some toes some toes at some point
gather some leg reference too. I got I got plenty from like this side, but I don't have I don't like have anything for the front. I do want to get some more, especially the knees. Especially the knees and the forearms and everything, really. And there's a lot of work to be done on the face yet. Yeah, see how it look, how everything looks. In in render to you go ahead and subdivide that.
Oh shit. Light. Oh, there it goes. It's kind of, kind of, sort of. What could be happening? sky. Do we still have visible shape? the visible shape. Geometry lights in Marmoset. Is that possible? Huh. 
Hello. Hello, if it, it's a brill. Am I saying that right? Is 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 there a bre is <laughs> if Zabril, it's Zabril, is Zabril, or is it Isabril? Oh, Abril, okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry if I chopped up your name. Oh, man. I am looking. <clears throat> hmm, here, creation for resources. Refraction, long I said, dealer. Do, 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 Export that. Yeah, I'm just I'm just uh, messing around with some lighting, kind of doing some lighting with Dev now. trying to rough rough something in for the scene there's still a long ways to go on the modeling and everything you know the pose textures whole bunch of stuff still very early on right now we can change the color to this. So the aim is to do um, my overall aim is to, you know, do something illustrative and I don't know if you've seen the earlier videos, but, um, kind of aiming for something in this spectrum. Uh, this is kind of, this is kind of like the the central image uh, that I'm drawing from. And I kind of created, not kind of, and then I, I photo bashed this together, but I don't know if I'm gonna go with the wings and everything. So I'm, I'm still, I'm still uh, thinking about it in terms of, you know, what the, what I want the final image to look like. So, I mean, I definitely want, I'm doing something along this, this lines, but it, you know, it's just, it's just going to evolve. So that's why I'm, I'm kind of keeping the character fairly simple. Um, you know, not, not like a lot of armor and stuff. Uh, just trying to do something kind of simple and il illustrative. But yeah, these images are by, uh, these aren't my images, just just so you know. Like the these uh, reference images. This is by 
WLOP, and you can find their work on ArtStation by that name, and they he does a lot of incredible illustrations. So yeah, and he and he's not even like a, uh, I guess he's a. Or there, I don't know if it's a he or she. They're a um, programmer. They're actually like a computer engineer, and I think you know, I don't know. And he does it. Or they do illustrations. They do, uh, yeah, does these amazing illustrations. Anyway, that was that was that was the that's the source of the image, and um, and I'll probably do some of these buildings, but I'll probably do more like facades or fronts, just just to have just to have them in the uh, in the scene as well, just to see what happens. Thanks, I'm glad you like it so far. So, and th this is probably, you know, this is, you know, I'm going I'm going for her, like, pretty much her face. I'm, you know, trying to capture her likeness. So, we'll see how it evolves. You know, it's kind of, kind of, it's kind of better to pick, you know, uh, a concept or a reference to go directly at for a stream. You know, it helps focus, like, the workflow a little better. So I'm kind of bouncing around on everything. But, yeah, it's all, it's all good. You know. So, and I'm also thinking, you know, since this is like a balcony, there's definitely going to be, there would be a window over here somewhere. So I probably want to get some kind of light. You know, that'll be like the the fill light would be coming from the window the window that's not really there but it's there the light from it will be there oh my god I guess it'll probably be more of a white light. Like as I create these lights, um, I do create them on the sky just to get them in there. Uh, but I do um, pull them out of the sky box and just I'll eventually have them in their own folder. I mean, you could lock them, but I just pull them out, especially if I change them to like a directional or area light or something. Um, let me see. Let me make that a Omni. Are these all? That's an Omni. That should be an Omni. That should be an Omni. Oh no, I do want to keep that skylight in there. Never mind. I do want to have. Uh, let me see. No, no, no. That's wrong. Okay, this is this is. That's my front light. Okay.
so. some different skies here night midday morning it's definitely night It's downloading. Overlook Twin Peaks. Let's see what that do. Oh, I kind of like that. That might. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. Yeah, that is what I'm looking for. All right, cool. So let me go ahead and save this out. Yeah, because I really needed something where the light was coming from the bottom. So I think this uh, this should work out. Well, well, the 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 ambient light in you know is coming from the bottom. So this should work out pretty good. And we can have the moon too. We can have the moon. I'll be coming back to this. All right. Let's 
point. That is going to be it for now. Go ahead and save that. Close it out. And everyone who checked out the stream and hung out for a little bit, I appreciate it. Um, I'm probably going to come back on tomorrow. Um, yeah, I'll be back on tomorrow sometime in the late afternoon. So uh, if you're subscribed, you'll get the notification. Um, and that's that. All right. Thanks.